It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got something very, very special for you. It comes in a wooden box. Here it is. It is Shepherd Neem's Mash Tun Number no. 1. It's a 750ml bottle. It's a historic brew celebrating the 100th anniversary of Britain's last remaining wooden mash tuns. Signature from the head brewer there on the label also. It's been brewed with six malts. Let me tell you about these malts. It's been brewed with a traditional British grist of pale, crystal, amber, brown, chocolate and malted wheat. And then we've got to balance them with the hops coming through. From Kent, first gold. And then we've got North American hops, Centennial and Amarillo. So, six different malts. This is going to be, I think, a fabulous beer. If you want to check out the video for the, we did a brewery tour down at Shepherd Neem Real Ale Craft Beer back about three or four years ago. If you just put in the YouTube search, Shepherd Neem Brewery Tour, you will see that 100 year old mash tun. We were there, we were speaking to the then head brewer, Stuart Main, great guy, retired now unfortunately, but um, we had the privilege to get a, get an interview with him and, and see these mash tuns and he talks a little bit about the mash tuns. So check out the old mash tun on the Shepherd Inn Brewery Tour. But let's get this beer opened. It's in a nice plywood handmade box with a brass clasp on the side. Opening the box. We have a little ticket, which I'll show you in a moment. And then of course, there's the beer. Look at that. I do like a bit of quality. I do like a bit of style. So, we've got the Shepherd Neem sticker. Nice bit of paper here. Covering the bottle. Here we go. Oh, what a lovely bottle. Look at that. I'm going to keep that for my home brews. I'm going to put some beer in here after I finish with this. After I've reviewed it. Got the Shepherd Neem, Faversham in Kent, Faversham Brewery, stamped on the bottle. Mash turn number one, 7.4% ABV, black cap, black bottle. Let's get it out into a glass and see what we get. Nice bit of smoke on the opening. And why not? I'm going to use a pint glass from Shepherd Neem. There's the the hook, the bishop's hook. Wow, look at that. So a deep mahogany copper coloured ale. It's been filtered, doesn't look like a ball conditioned beer to me. It might be, there's well over half the bottle left. For a chestnut mahogany colored ale, nice and clear. Nice amounts of carbonation. It's got a two finger tan colored head. Let's see if we can pick up some of these malts, shall we? In the aroma. And of course, the hops. That aroma is to die for. It really is. What am I picking up? Absolutely everything. What is there not to pick up? This pale malt, so you're going to get a little bit of a kind of a pale ale aroma. Because there's American hops here. There's some chocolate malt, so you're going to get a little bit of porter, a little bit of stout.
Oh, it's it's red, it's berry, it's red ale like, then it's then it's stout like. It's very vinous. Loads of burnt roasted toffee. This is a beer for a special occasion. It's just before Christmas, so it's the reason why we're reviewing it now. And that it's just arrived on our doorstep. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. me stone the crows stone the crow crows I do believe that is my first stone the crows for a shepherd named beer I don't often say it anymore I only say it for something very very special and my initial reaction to this is utter perfection there's so much to talk about for this beer I could start with the hops I could start with the water quality from Kent. I could start from all them lovely five or six different malts they brewed with this beer. But I want to talk about the mouthfeel. For me, as I've progressed as a beer reviewer over time, I've learned to appreciate a really good mouthfeel. This is a creamy, rich, medium, bodied almost kind of breakfast cereal consistency thickness it's lovely it's gloopy it sits on your palate the beer kind of wraps around the tongue and in the inside of your mouth and it kind of just slowly slides down your throat and in doing that it leaves a residue it leaves some of that beer on your throat it leaves some of that beer on your tongue and in the inside of your mouth a bit like if you had, if you drank a glass full of engine oil, it would kind of just seal itself all around your throat. I am not asking you to drink any engine oil. I am just using it as a consistency. Then, the carbonation. The carbonation lifts. It's, it's big, it's meaty, it's chewy, it's bold, but that carbonation lifts the beer. It gives it a bit of, a bit of life, a bit of mile per hour. It's not overly carbonated, it's not going down and sitting in my stomach and bloating me out. It's just enough to give the beer some life. Now I want to talk to you about these wonderful flavours in this beer. Caramel malt, chewy, bready, biscuity sweetness. Like you walk past the bakery first thing in the morning and the baker's just, he's made a bit of a mistake. He's slightly cooked them bread rolls a little bit too much or baked them a little bit too much, should I say. And they're slightly burnt. They're a little bit kind of dark. But when you're walking past, that can be one of the most amazing smells in the morning is freshly baked bread and you get this in abundance with this beer this is by far and a country mile by this the best beer I have ever had from Shepherd Dean this is just truly staggering this porter in there, this stout red ale there's pale ale, there's a little bit of IPA in there with the American hops. I think this beer should probably be brewed every year. Every year at Christmas time, this should be kind of pulled out, sold, and I'm pretty sure as the years go on, this will be the number one 
Christmas present to buy your uncle or your father or your brother-in-law or your best mate. This beer will live in history forever. It's unbelievable. And I've not even got to the ABV yet, a 7.4%. Yes, there's a lot of malt in you. Yes, they've had to add a lot of malt to get that ABV up to where it needs to be. But it hides it so well. It's drinking so well. It's a dangerous beer. It's drinking like a Belgian beer. And I'm going to be honest. It's not often you can say that about a regional brewery in the UK. That their beers are, are as good as the Belgian beers. Because the Belgian beers, they, they hide the alcohol level so well. You sit in a Belgian cafe and you have a Belgian beer as a complete beer novice. And you could be drinking a 9% beer and you wouldn't even know it until you got off, off your chair and went to the toilet and you started staggering sideways. That is the quality of beer. And Belgian beer. But this 7.4% ABV is drinking like a 4-5% to ABV beer. There's no alcohol kind of kick at all. I haven't even got to the hops yet. So you get malt, you get more malt, more malt. And then, here it is. It's a fantastic building, ramping bitterness. At first it's a fight with them sweet malts. There's a little bit of kind of, hang on, I want to go first. No, I want to go first. And then after them malts decide to let the, the hops walk down the escalator. It's like London. It's like the escalators in London where, where you stand on the right. If you just want to not, not walk down the escalator, but if you want to stand on the left, left, be prepared to be pushed all over the place. And that's what the hops are doing in this beer. The hops are barging, they're pushing, they, they want to get to their next destination as quick as possible. So it's moving the malt out the way, so it's one big battle. I hope this is making sense. So the hop flavours then are grapefruit, mango, there's a lot of citrus in there, there's lemon, there's fleshy blood orange. It's a mighty fine beer. I've not even covered what I wanted to cover. There's so much more I want to say, but I need to cut the review short because it's probably gone past 10 minutes already. There's a picture of the mash tun. I know there's, there's a little bit of marketing here, it comes in a nice wooden box, there's a nice little ticket, but sometimes in life it needs, or, or not needs, this deserves it. This beer deserves this little ticket. This beer deserves this wooden box. It's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Let's give it a rating. Look how much I got left for myself. Nice. I'm gonna go away and enjoy this beer now, but before I do, you guessed it, I'm gonna give this beer a 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10 from Real Craft Beer. One of the best multi brewy poppy punching beers I've had all year. That is absolutely fantastic. Thanks for watching. Thank you to Shepherd Neen for sending the beer. Put your comments in the comments box. Please subscribe to our daily beer reviews and cheers.